welcome to course on advanced geotechnical engineering in the yesterday's lecture we have introduced ourselves to different modeling techniques in geotechnical engineering and we narrowed down to a technique which is called as physical modeling or geotechnical physical modeling this lecture is a continuation of uh, geotechnical physical modeling uh, topic so this comes under module 7 lecture 2 on geotechnical physical modeling so yesterday we have uh, discussed that if a physical model can be modeled at full scale then we need not have uh, have to worry about the uh, you know the scale factors or scaling relationships but if the model is not constructed at one is to one scale then we need to have some idea about the way in which we should extrapolate the observations that means if you look from the material behavior point of view linear and homogeneous for the loads applied in the model if the material is linear or if the material behavior is linear and homogeneous for the loads applied in the model then details of the model can be predicted to prototype uh, without much of uh, uh, you know worries that means that still the, with the help of dimension analysis we can do that but if the material behavior is non-linear or if the geotechnical structure has several materials with interact with which interact with each other then it requires understanding about more into dimension analysis and uh, similitude relationships between parameters influencing model and prototype. So this dimension analysis basically it is a method for deducing elements of the form of a theoretical relationship from consideration of the variables and parameters that make up the relationship. The dimension analysis is now a method for deducing a relationship among variables which are influencing a particular phenomenon and these variables can be you know dependent variables and independent variables and dependent variable is the one where which governs the entire phenomenon and independent variables are the one which influences the phenomenon. So if any change in the you know independent variable then there is an influence on the dependent variable. So dimension analysis of a problem leads to a reduction in the number of variables that must be studied in order to understand the problem. So by doing dimension analysis we will be able to uh, lead, lead to a reduction in the number of variables that must be studied in order to understand the problem. So the governing dimensionally homogeneous equations have to be deduced among the key variables in influencing the, the special phenomenon. So uh, for this uh, purpose we have two methods one is uh, uh, Rayleigh's method or we also call as method of product of powers the other one is uh, Buckingham's uh, Pi theorem in the Rayleigh's method. Uh, if we are having say variables like q1, q2, q3, q4 to so qn if they are influencing a particular phenomenon by expressing as a method of product of power powers and uh, expanding the infinite series of uh, terms and by satisfying the condition of dimensional homogeneity we can prove that the dimension of q1 is to be equal to dimension of q, q2 to the raise a1 q to the raise uh, a2 so on to qn to the raise an wherein n is nothing but here the number of uh, variables. So by uh, adjusting uh, by writing the integral equations we can actually get uh, you know the values of a1, a2, a3 so on to an and by getting these uh, values we will be able to uh, you know uh, get a relationship among uh, uh, the dependent variable and independent variable but this method fails if you are actually having more number of variables let, let us say more than seven variables then this method the operation involves tedious and converting one solution to another solution uh, involves uh, the algebraic uh, adjustments. In such situations the Buckingham's Pi theorem is uh, a viable option and wherein if you have got let us say q1 to so on to q2, q3 so on to qn then here uh, and r dash and r double dash and r triple dash if there are uh, uh, you know these uh, uh, dimensionless ratios then we can actually deduce in the, in the term of pi terms whereas pi 1 
is a function of pi 2 so on to pi 3 so on to pi n and uh, uh, r dash and r double dash and r triple dash. So here what it implies is that uh, when uh, from the uh, similar procedure we will be able to get this but in order to get the number of dimensionless products what we need to do is that uh, in the Buckingham's pi theorem we have to arrange these variables uh, in such a way that you get the non singular matrix uh, towards the right hand side of the matrix of uh, the dimensional matrix. Once we solve this dimensional matrix and determine the rank of a matrix then we can actually ascertain the number of pi terms. Let us say uh, number of variables are say 10 and if you have got say uh, rank of that matrix as 2 then number of dimensionless products possible for that uh, particular phenomenon under consideration is equal to n minus uh, r that is 10 minus 2 8. So after having obtained uh, the ascertained the number of uh, pi terms and writing by writing linear algebraic equations and uh, by putting pi 1 to pi, pi, pi 8 in the matrix of solutions and uh, satisfying those equations which are deduced based on the uh, you know dimensional matrix uh, coefficients we can actually write uh, get the pi, uh, pi 1 pi 2 so on to pi 8 uh, in the given example. So the Buckingham's pi theorem is used for reducing dimensionless products and dimensionless uh, dimension analysis does not reveal the form of relationship between dimension products but the correct use of dimension products make parametric studies more efficient by revealing uh, which variables are truly uh, independent which variables are true, uh, you know insignificant and also faces for the also forms the basis for extrapolating from one scale of observation to other scale of observation. So after uh, once we uh, get the uh, pi terms let us say we have got say set of 5 pi terms. So our similarity between model and prototype what we say is that the particular uh, phenomenon which actually has been modeled is uh, influenced by pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4, pi 5. This implies that pi 1 is a function of pi 2, pi 3, pi 4, pi 5. For similarity between model and prototype if you are actually not modeling at 1 is to 1 scale then for 1 is to n model small scale model for pi 1 to be equal to pi uh, equal to pi for pi 1 to be equal to model and prototype that is pi 1 in model to equal to be equal to pi 1 in uh, prototype we have to satisfy pi 5 in model uh, is equal to pi 5 in prototype pi 4 in model uh, is equal to pi 4 in prototype so on up to pi 2 in model uh, equal to pi 2 in prototype. If we are not able to uh, achieve the complete similarity in satisfying all the pi terms then we say that the partial similarity is achieved. Then we need to investigate that particular uh, effect of not modeling uh, not satisfying this particular this thing have to be uh, verified by experimental investigations. So let us take uh, an example uh, of buried uh, flexible conduit. So this is a uh, example of a geotechnical structure which deforms under the conditions of plane strain. So plane strain uh, in the sense that if a long body is subjected to uh, traverse load transverse loading and its cross section and loading do not vary significantly in the longitudinal direction a small thickness in the loaded area can be treated as subjected to plane strain. So here in this uh, particular slide what we are seeing is a underground uh, conduit having diameter d and uh, h is the uh, you know the embedded depth and e i by b is nothing but flexural rigidity of this conduit uh, per unit width that you uh, per per, uh, per uh, b units of widths and the gamma is nothing but the unit weight of the soil and es is nothing but the soil stiffness or elastic modulus of the soil and p by b is the line load which is at a certain distance if it is uh, uh, at this particular point it is right on top of that and p by b is at a certain distance and x and y are the coordinates in the x direction and y direction and perpendicular to this is uh, say uh, is the z axis. So the plane strain condition when we say uh, that these conditions are uh, satisfied for this type for example like a retaining wall or slope uh, of an um, highway embankment or railway embankment, embankment dam or levee section they are examples of uh, plane strain uh, or a stiff foundation of a footing 
uh, of a stiff footing of a typical foundation which extending for number of columns in one line and uh, these are all examples of plane strain. So, epsilon z uh, is equal to uh, the shear strain in z direction shear strain in z, z x direction shear strain in y y z direction will be equal to 0 that means that the strain uh, in uh, uh, in this direction that is z x z x plane and uh, y z plane will be 0 and similarly the shear, stre shear stress in y z direction shear stress in the z x direction will be 0. So, only it will have in x y direction and uh, you know deformations and as well as the strains will be there in these directions. So, this uh, particular uh, structure is an example of uh, uh, plane strain uh, structure. So, what we see is that uh, the load P by B which actually causes uh, you know in a, in a bending moment per unit width let us say. So, the depending upon the you know uh, the loading uh, you know the bending moment uh, per unit width will uh, uh, per uh, B unit widths will uh, increase or decrease. So, let us say that an important parameter uh, would be bending moment uh, per unit width uh, uh, that is M by B uh, resulting in the wall of the conduit due to construction procedures and surface traffic loading. So, the example of say line load what we have considered is uh, let us say a boundary wall and uh, or a railway track the structural property that in that will influence the bending uh, will again be a flexural rigidity per unit width that is E i by B. In addition moments will be influenced by diameter D that is the internal diameter H that is the embedded depth of a conduit gamma that is the density surrounding the uh, conduit and P by B that is the loading which is applied. So, the interaction between the conduit and the soil will be influenced by the stiffness of the soil that is E s. Uh, at a typical depth h that is the interaction between the conduit and the soil will be influenced by the stiffness of the soil E s at a typical depth. So, what we have got is that bending moment uh, that is m by b uh, and uh, we have parameters like E i by b it is a uh, conduit uh, uh, parameter and uh, loading parameters are nothing but p by b and uh, again conduit parameter d and soil parameters are h that is the embedded depth and that is the geometry configuration and the gamma is nothing but the unit weight of soil and E s is nothing but the stiffness of the soil. So, uh, by solving by using the Buckingham's uh, Pi theorem uh, and uh, by writing uh, dimensional matrix influencing the variables and uh, solving the matrix of uh, writing the matrix of solutions we get M by B gamma d q is equal to a function of h by d p by b by gamma h d e i by b e s d q p by b d square by e i by b. So, if you look into this this particular arrangement has been made such a way that we can lead to some important discussion by using this problem. There can be different arrangements are possible depending upon the, the type of repeating variables which we have chosen but one solution to other solutions can be transformed by uh, doing the algebraic adjustments for the pi terms because if you are having a pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 influencing the phenomenon if, uh, if these are pi terms which are say uh, dimensionless if pi 1 is uh, pi term pi 1 by pi 3 is also dimensionless. So, depending upon the requirement but without changing the number of pi terms which are used originally we can transform and get the new pi terms of choice. If you are having a particular variable and if that, need that variable needs to be more than say if it is appearing in more than 3 pi terms if that variable needs to be eliminated can be eliminated by doing the adjustments what has been set. But it has to be seen that the first pi term or the principal pi term used only once. So, m by b by gamma d cube which is function of this thing. So, here there are stress and stiffness related uh, quantities in the loading uh, spread over the cross section of the conduit P by B D and the stress in the ground at the mid height. For example, here uh, this is gamma H uh, represents the vertical stress in the ground at the mid height of the this thing and here this is the conduit stiffness and soil stiffness. You know you can see that the conduit stiffness and soil stiffness are uh, related here. And, uh, so, the flexural rigidity E i by B and corresponding uh, soil stiffness which is actually uh, related. So, let us discuss further 
uh, you know how we can actually deduce uh, you know different relationships. So here uh, further uh, the continuation of the solution for the example for buried flexible conduit. Now what we do is that we have said is that when you have got set of pi terms uh, and uh, uh, by uh, for similarity uh, you know so and so pi term let us say pi 3 in model has to be equal to pi 3 in uh, prototype. So if all these are satisfied then only the primary or principal pi term that is uh, uh, involving bending moment will be uh, satisfied. So with uh, p by b in model uh, divided by gamma h d in model equal to p by b in prototype uh, divided by gamma h d in prototype. So here we, we can actually get two situations what we said is that if you are not modeling at uh, full scale uh, you know then uh, if you had, at 1 is to 1 uh, that p by b uh, in model is equal to uh, gamma h d in model both are same you know in model and prototype are same. But when we are actually modeling at a scale different than 1 is to 1 that is say small scale model 1 is to n let us say the environment what we have is that same soil is used as that in the prototype with that we can say that gamma m is equal to gamma p by uh, with for gamma m is equal to gamma p and 1 is to n small scale model what we get is that p by b in model to p by b in prototype is equal to 1 by n square. So that is nothing but what we have done is that by uh, uh, by bringing this term here and uh, bringing this term there gamma m and gamma p 1 h m by h p h h m by h p is equal to 1 by n d m by d p is equal to 1 by n by substituting that uh, in the in this we get p by b in model divided by p by b p, uh, uh, prototype is equal to 1 by 1 square. So m suffix indicates model and p indicates prototype which is nothing but 1 by n square. Let us assume that we have got a, a situation where gamma m is equal to n gamma p is possible that means that there is a let us say there is a requirement which actually has come and the way the we, we are able to uh, in a physical model we are able to enhance the grav uh, enhance the, the unit weight of the soil by n times. So that means that if you are having uh, you know 20 kilo Newton per meter cube of a soil at uh, at uh, by enhanced uh, 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 with enhanced uh, n we get gamma m is equal to 20 n and uh, the for an 1 is 2 n scale model we get by substituting in a similar way with gamma m by gamma p is equal to n uh, we get p by b in model is equal to p by b in prototype is equal to 1 by n. So we can see that if we are having gamma m is equal to n gamma p we are actually getting uh, P, P by B in model by P by B in prototype as 1 by n. Now with the P by considering another pi term so what we do is that once after having obtained the uh, line load scale factor in model in prototype uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, with gamma m is equal to gamma p for a 1 is 2 n small scale model gamma m is equal to n gamma p for uh, 1 is 2 n scale model by considering another pi term which actually has got uh, uh, p by b and a by b terms by using uh, this uh, uh, particular uh, pi term and uh, this relationship and for gamma m is equal to gamma p and d m m by d p is equal to 1 by n and we have deduced uh, in the previous slide p by b in model is equal to p uh, is equal to 1 by n square times p by b in prototype by substituting this we get e i by b in model by e i by b in prototype is 1 by n to the power of 4. So please note that this is 1 by n to the power of 4 that means that whatever we are having uh, you know uh, the value of uh, uh, flexible rigidity per uh, b widths will be 1 by n to the power of 4 that of uh, uh, in the uh, 1, by n, 1, 1 by n to the power of 4 times of that. So that means that if you are having uh, a a by p p value which has to be 1 by n to the power of 4 times uh, smaller. Similarly with gamma m is equal to n gamma p and d m by d p is equal to 1 by n and p m p by p by b in model by p by b in p is equal to 1 by n this is 1 by n with that we will be able to get a by b in model is equal to 1 by n cube times a by b in prototype. So now we have understood that the flexural rigidity with p by b in model uh, by p by b in prototype is equal to 1 by n with that we will be able to get this particular scale factor. Now what we do is that by using this uh, you know term 
which involve flexural rigidity and flexural uh, 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 this the soil stiffness term EABV in model divided by ESD cube in model is equal to EABB prototype by ESD cube by prototype by with gamma m is equal to gamma p uh, and dm by dp is equal to 1 by n and uh, EIB in model by EABB in prototype is equal to 1 by n to the power of 4. If you put this in the substitute in this what we get is that with, with gamma m is equal to gamma p and a small scale model and with the deduction what we reduced here for E i by b um, scale factor for 1 is to uh, n scale model with gamma m is equal to gamma p we get the soil stiffness in model is 1 by n times smaller than the soil stiffness in the prototype whereas when you have a gamma m is equal to n gamma p environment with the dm by dp is equal to 1 by n we can actually get E i by b in model by E i by b in prototype as 1 by n cube and by using this we get the soil stiffness in model and prototype is equal to 1. So this actually has got uh, you know very high uh, strong, uh, strong relevance that means that in, in, in uh, modeling uh, the particular prototype behavior if you are actually having a simulation of a identical stiffness as that in the prototype the response of a, a particular structure for example in this case a buried uh, flexible conduit in model so this implies that if you are actually having an environment like gamma m is equal to n gamma p and even for a small scale model we can actually maintain uh, you know the same uh, stiffness as that in the prototype. If you are actually having the same stiffness as that in the prototype that implies that the identical stress to strain behavior of a uh, you know uh, in, in the prototype can be captured very well in a model which is actually tested in a small scale model which is reduced by 1 is to n tested at gamma m is equal to n gamma p. So this is very important as far as uh, uh, you know the physical model geotechnical physical modeling particularly with the gamma m is equal to n gamma p consideration point of view. So let us now consider uh, an example like slope in co uh, cohesive soil and assume that uh, we actually have got uh, a uh, a saturated clay under undrained conditions. So it actually has got undrained cohesion and gamma as the unit weight of the soil and uh, D is the depth below the uh, base that is the this is the base layer depth and H is the height of the slope and beta is the slope inclination. So if you look into it the stability of a slope is actually depends upon the parameters like Cu, gamma, beta, H and D. So if you are, when you list out the variables we actually have got factor of safety is a function of H that is nothing but the slope height, beta that is the slope inclination, Cu undrained cohesion, gamma and D. So by again by using uh, this can be done by using uh, Rayleigh's method or by using uh, uh, Buckingham's Pi theorem uh, and uh, while writing uh, uh, dimensional matrix if you are having uh, terms like this we can actually use force and length approach. That means that force is expressed as MLT minus 2, the dimensions of force MLT minus 2 and L, L as L, and the stress is nothing but F by L square, and the unit weight is nothing but F by L cube. And you know, by using this, we will get two algebraic equations, and by solving them and we by writing matrix of solutions, we can actually get relationship among the variables. Now, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 variables are there and we get the rank of the matrix of the dimensional matrix will be 2. So 6 minus 2, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 pi terms. So in this out of these 2 are already dimensionless terms, one is factor safety, another one is beta that is the angle or slope inclination. So here what it actually says is that the factor of safety is a function of beta d by h and cu by gamma h. Now from the similarity point of view what we say is that factor of safety in order for factor of safety in model and prototype to be same. If at all we are modeling this particular situation of a slope in cohesive soil the for factor of safety in model and prototype to be same what we say or what we have to do is that beta in model and prototype to be same. That means that the slope inclination in model and prototype to be same and d by h that is the ratio between the d that is the depth below the uh, you know toe of the slope to uh, the height of the slope d by h ratio in model and prototype to be same. If you are and, and then Cu by gamma h in model and prototype will be same. If all these pi terms are same in model and prototype for a 1 is 2 n scaled model 
then we can say that the factor of safety uh, in model and prototype will be same. So, if at all uh, you know let us see by looking into the uh, you know the different combinations we say that how this is actually possible. Now one thing we can actually look is that according to Taylor's uh, 1948 uh, uh, theory uh, the Taylor, Taylor actually has given for slope inclinations greater than 53 degrees we can say that uh, it is independent of uh, d by h factor depth factor then we can write factor of safety is equal to function of Cu by gamma h and uh, beta. So uh, here the number of variables that need to be considered only two it implies that it is required to maintain the same margin of safety in model and prototype not only the geometry but also Cu by gamma z should be a constant. So this implies that for similarity between model and prototype for a uh, we actually have to uh, you know uh, for maintain the same margin of safety in model prototype not only the geometry that is the slope inclination but also Cu by gamma h should be constant. The Cu by gamma h should be constant means how that is possible means let us say that we actually have constructed a small scale model h is reduced by h by n. If you look into it somehow let us say that the slope inclination is achieved uh, then the Cu by gamma h in model and prototype to be constant what it implies is that the for a slope which is reduced by 1 by n times the Cu by gamma h uh, you know to be same what it says that the term to be same the Cu by gamma has to be reduced by 1 by n times. If that is reduced by 1 by uh, 1 by n times then only it is possible that you know you will be able to uh, make uh, uh, you know uh, the similarity possible. So if you look into this uh, if the G can be uh, you know one of the alternatives if you see that uh, you know by reducing the equation in the in this particular term for similar to be achieved what we can say is that by maintaining identical uh, unit weight as that in prototype like gamma m is equal to gamma p and the Cu in model and prototype uh, let us say that it is reduced by 1 by n times then we can actually say by maintaining identical gamma in model and prototype we can reduce Cu in the model and prototype by 1 by n times that means that the cohesion of a soil is reduced by 1 by n times that in the prototype. If you are able to do that when, when, you, when you reduce uh, you know h by n and Cu by uh, n then they get cancelled then possibility that they will be same. But you know by uh, you know this is uh, you know topic to be discussed the stress strain behavior of a soil which is actually having a, a cohesion of 1 by n times the cohesion of that in the prototype uh, and uh, actual cohesion of say Cu the both you know the stress strain behavior is drastically different. For a, let, uh, this can be explained through an example let us consider that in a prototype we are actually having a 50 kilo Pascals of cohesion and we are actually trying to reduce this by uh, say 5 times that means that a cohesion of a soil in the model is 10 kilo Pascals. So the stress strain behavior of a soil under unrained conditions for uh, you know yielding a 10 kilo Pascals of cohesion and 50 kilo Pascals of cohesion is different. So this implies that the change in soil behavior which says that which uh, this implies that uh, the change in soil behavior and the response of a model will not be you know as similar as that in the prototype. So the change in soil behavior cannot be you know accepted. But one thing uh, you know uh, you know in the in this uh, particular uh, uh, you know approach uh, the scaling down of CA implies that the change in soil behavior. But another option is that uh, we have discussed in uh, buried conduit example is that making gamma n times that means that the soil the self weight of the soil n times heavier that means that gamma m is equal to n gamma p and maintaining identical cohesion as that in the prototype if we are able to achieve a uh, situation wherein gamma m is equal to n gamma p and Cu is identical in modern prototype even with that also what we are saying is that the Cu by gamma term is 1 by n times that of the uh, Cu by gamma term is uh, is reduced. So with that we can actually say that Cu by gamma h in modern prototype will be satisfied. In that situations, what is actually we are have we are doing is that if we are not able to reduce the cohesion for satisfying the similarity from some similarity point of view then another option another viable option it appears to be is that by enhancing the unit weight of the soil gamma m is equal to gamma p with that we can actually maintain Cu by gamma h in modern prototype identical. So uh, this uh, is explained 
uh, in this particular slide. So what we said is that for a small scale model if a H is reduced and gamma remains unchanged the strength of the soil must be reduced in the same proportion. So this implies that what we are actually discussing the change in soil behavior. Another option what we actually said is that the enhancing gamma, gamma is nothing but if you define uh, you know this uh, um, you know term gamma unit weight of the soil as rho into g where rho is nothing but the mass density let us say in this case of soil mass density of the soil and g is nothing but acceleration due to gravity. So rho which is mass density is a function of packing of particles for a soil or is a basic property of a metal and g can be changed from one celestial body to another body. So by using this particular concept and assuming that you know the variation of g is possible we have an examples like on the moon acceleration due to lunar gravity is about 20 percent of the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the earth. Similarly the Jupiter g on the Jupiter planet is 33 percent more than the earth. So um, by with that uh, allied thinking we say that this gamma m is equal to n gamma p is possible where gamma is equal to rho into g where uh, by maintaining identical mass density as that in the prototype that is rho m is equal to rho p and g m is actually say increased by n times we can say that g m is equal to n g p with that gamma model and prototype the scale factor for unit weight gamma m is equal to n gamma p is possible that means that provided the g sustained g is actually induced to the model which is in this example a slope in and cohesive soil it makes actually for us is possible for us to achieve that gamma is gamma m is equal to n gamma p condition with that what we said is that the uh, the dimensionless uh, term cu by gamma h in model and prototype will be identical without changing the soil properties so that means that when you are actually having you know any parameter which is actually influenced in the model and prototype you this you know it is governed by a relationship called rm rm is nothing but a physical quantity in model rp is nothing but the physical quantity in prototype the lambda is the proportionality constant so the relationship so it the the physical quantity can be time velocity acceleration or force or it can be a, uh, stress uh, it can be strain so is uh, established by you know the relationship need to be established for each and every variable so that for similitude to achieve between model and prototype which is not scaled uh, which is not tested at 1 is to 1. Now let us consider another example which is uh, uh, you know let us say circular footing on sand. So if you look into this we have got a footing of diameter d resting on the sand having a you know dry sand and gamma is the unit weight of the sand and e is the void ratio and phi is the angle of interparticle friction between sand grains that is the angle of internal friction is pi sigma c is nothing but interparticle cohesion between the sand grains when the sand grains interact with each other the interparticle cohesion generated between the sand grains is indicated by sigma c sigma g is nothing but the crushing strength of the grain material that means that depending upon the the composition of the grain they have different crushing strengths so so sigma g is nothing but the crushing strength of the grain material similarly depending upon the type of grain material we have different modulus of elasticities. So eg is nothing but the modulus of elasticity of grains. Now by taking sigma c, sigma g and eg as the material properties of the you know the grains which are actually involved we can and then dg is nothing but the average particle size. So now if you look into it if you are actually having a situation of modeling this at 1 is to 1 scale and by for a given value of delta by d we and by using Buckingham's pi theorem we can get p by gamma d is equal to function of e phi sigma c by gamma d sigma g by gamma d e g by gamma d and d g by d. So here this is the particle size and this is a particle size to the diameter and e g by gamma d and that is nothing but the you know modulus of elasticity and unit weight of the soil multiplied by d diameter of the footing. Similarly we have got these terms like this. Now for p by gamma d to be model and prototype to be same what it says is that 
dz by d in model to be equal to dz by d in prototype. Similarly, this pi term has to be same in model and prototype, and this pi term has to be same in model and prototype, and this this pi term that is sigma c by gamma d in model to be same in prototype, and friction angle in model to be prototype model and prototype, and void ratio the particle arrangement to be same in model and prototype. Now we can actually say that if you are modeling this situation in one is to one, and all these pi terms will be identical. But if you are having a 1 is to n model and with gamma m is equal to gamma p condition then what we have is that let us see what will happen when you wanted to compare these pi terms. Let us assume that we are actually could able to achieve brought the same soil and void ratio and friction angle are achieved then E model and prototype and phi model and prototype are same. But being these are material properties and by identical gamma but diameter of the footing is reduced by d by n. So this term is not equal to model uh, sigma c by gamma d in model uh, in proto, uh, sigma c by gamma d uh, model is not equivalent to sigma c by gamma d prototype which is nothing but sigma c divided by gamma d by n. So this is different from uh, you know what we are actually need to be obtained. Then sigma similarly sigma g by gamma d similarly e g by gamma d similarly d g by d. So if you look into is for similarity if you look at the deviation 1, 2, 3, 4 pi terms are you know deviating from the you know similarity that means that you know we are actually having very very weak similarity as far as similarity is concerned for gamma, with gamma m is equal to gamma p and 1 is to for 1 is to n scale model. If the similar situation let us say that by you know enhancing the gravity if you are able to impose a condition for the similar problem gamma m is equal to n gamma p. If you are able to do gamma m is equal to n gamma p for a small scale physical model which is 1 is to n reduced by 1 by n times then what we can see is that again with the same assumption of so with a sigma c sigma g and e g as material properties we can say that gamma is increased by n times and d is decreased by 1 by n times sigma c divided by uh, n gamma divided by d by n so they get cancelled sigma c by gamma d in model and prototype will be identical and sigma g by gamma d in model and prototype will be identical similarly e g in model and prototype uh, in e g by gamma d in model and prototype will be equivalent but here being uh, you know uh, you know uh, you uh, within a, we are going with an assumption that identical soil as that in the prototype that means that the particle sizes are constant and we have reduced in this case also d by n. So here what we have is that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi terms are identical. So the strong you know, uh, you know similarity is achieved except one pi term that is dg by d by n. In case of gamma m is equal to n gamma p also we are uh, you know we are not able to in a capability not able to uh, you know scale down uh, the particles that lead to you know an effect what we call and we are going to discuss is called particle size effect. So what we need to do is that how this particle size effect uh, can be eliminated that is what in the dimensional analysis if any uh, parameter or any variable and any dimensional product deviates from the similarity then we have to see uh, by maintaining uh, uh, you know Yes, by satisfying certain conditions how that particular uh, you know parameter is insignificant in influencing the uh, you know particular phenomenon let us say for making p by gamma d in model and prototype identical. So with those uh, uh, you know this discussion we understood that circular footing on sand and uh, slope in cohesive soil and uh, you know buried uh, flexible conduit uh, examples what we said is that by for a small scale model which is not tested at 1 is to 1 but which is tested at 1 is to n uh, it implies that uh, you know gamma m is equal to n gamma p condition fulfills and has actually got the superiority over gamma m is equal to gamma p and 1 is to n scale mo 1 is to n uh, physical model. Now uh, in order to enhance uh, gamma m is equal to n gamma p there are also uh, you know some uh, uh, attempts. Uh, uh, late uh, 1960s by Jellickson. So this was actually you know uh, introduced uh, based on the uh, you know total stress is equal to effective stress plus uh, poor, water, poor water pressure. So 
uh, if you look into this uh, you know the change in the geostatic stresses with the flow of water to the soils are possible. So introducing the hydraulic gradient similitude method so here let us consider if water is actually flowing to the soil we know that it exerts drag forces called seepage forces on individual grains of the soil and the presence of seepage forces which causes changes in the direction of flow will cause uh, you know changes in the pore water pressure and effective stresses in the soil. So by using this concept uh, Jellickson 1969 has come out with a method called hydraulic gradient similitude method which actually has got uh, you know uh, you know um, uh, as a possibility that gamma m can be maintained as n gamma p by doing that what actually we get is that the stress and uh, you know uh, the stress strain behavior of the soil can be um, um, maintained identical as that in the prototype. So let us consider the two cases the case one is that uh, you know hydrostatic condition when no flow takes place in this particular condition as there is no uh, head of uh, loss that is delta h is equal to 0 because the no flow condition then we actually have uh, this is called hydrostatic condition where you have got uh, uh, you know this is the total stress and this is the pore water pressure and this is the effective stress where effective stress is nothing but gamma dash h at this particular point and this particular point it is 0. So here 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 also in, in this level it is 0 and then it, it is 0 at this point and then here at this point the ordinate is gamma dash h. So no flow head loss delta h is equal to 0 and no change in the effective stress. So this is you know the case 1 case 2 you consider where this limb is actually brought down by h and if you look into this here because of this the water flows from you know downward direction. So the water flow is actually shown here in this case and hw is the height of water column and h is the the thickness of the soil sample. So we can actually write the total stress as uh, you know nothing but uh, sigma which is uh, here the total stress and the depth here we can write gamma w h w and gamma w h w plus gamma sat h. But here what we can actually write is that this is gamma w h w because water flows from this point to this point there is a head loss which actually takes place the pore water pressure drops by gamma if there are no flow condition what we have got is gamma w is equal to h w plus h now but it is dropped by a term which is nothing but minus h that is nothing but gamma w into h w plus h minus h now by taking total stress the by computing for effective stress that is total stress minus pore water pressure what we get is that gamma dash h plus h gamma w. So at this particular point we can actually write gamma dash h plus h gamma w and where the h is nothing but the head drop that is over a length h. So hydraulic gradient which is actually you know if you it will be something like a triangle which is actually having an ordinate h here and over a height of h the slope of that triangle hypotenuse is i, i is nothing but h by h that is small h by capital H. So by for h is equal to by substituting i, I times capital H we can write gamma dash h plus i h gamma w. So if you see the downward flow of a water increases effective stress in soil similarly in case 3 let us say if this limb is taken upwards then what we see is that effective stress decreases the down so we by this in the, in the hydraulic gradient similitude method this particular that increase in the effective stress in the direction of flow is uh, taken as uh, you know as a concept and then this uh, you know particular method is developed. So further uh, developing on this method so we know that in the hydraulic uh, in the in, in geotechnical engineering a small scale model tests are sometimes used to study the complex nature of soil response and soil structure interaction but it is well known that now the soil response depends upon the level of effective stress within the soil especially for granular materials if you look into that the for granular materials the soil response depends on the level of effective stress within the soil mass so granular materials at a given density can at different stress levels behave in either as a um, contractive or a dilatative behavior. So they can actually have contractive behavior or a com, uh, are dilatative behavior. So the small scale model test conducted at 1G often fail to ref, reveal or represent the phenomenon 
that may exist at the prototype stress level. So that is what actually we have discussed it from the, the problems like buried uh, flexible conduit or uh, from the footing resting on the sand we actually have said that the small scale model test candidate 1G often fail to reveal or represent the phenomenon that may exist at the prototype stress levels. To overcome this it is desirable to perform small scale model tests at uh, field stress conditions and for that what we said is that gamma m is equal to n gamma p is required. So let us say that uh, if you are actually having um, at a depth uh, h uh, we are having say unit weight uh, of soil say gamma then in the prototype we are having a vertical stress at a depth h is total stress is nothing but sigma v is equal to gamma h. Now if the same depth which is actually modeled in uh, 1 is to n scale model with gamma m is equal to gamma p and uh, hm by hp is equal to 1 by n the, the stress there is sigma v in model is equal to gamma h by n that is 1 by n times smaller than the stress which is actually there in the prototype. Now the same situation when it is say modeled with gamma m is equal to n gamma p or nothing but gamma is equal to rho n g condition with that uh, what we can actually get is that with gamma m is equal to n gamma p and hm by hp is equal to 1 by n we get gamma is uh, sigma v in model is equal to ga, uh, uh, that is gamma m that is n gamma p into h by n which is nothing but gamma h. So what we actually say is that the stress in model and prototype will be identical if you are actually having uh, you know the uh, you know gamma which is actually n times the gamma in prototype. Now we will see how that is actually uh, simulated by Jellickson. Uh, so Jellickson proposed uh, method uh, that employs a high hydraulic gradient within the granular soil to create a high body force and high stress levels approximating, approximating the field conditions. So we have discussed that uh, self weight forces and uh, the seepage forces they are treated as body forces and uh, the based on that concept and uh, you know the deduction what we actually met sigma dash is equal to gamma dash h plus gamma w h with i is equal to h by h what we have what we can say is that sigma dash is equal to gamma dash h plus i gamma w h. So here uh, with the sigma dash is equal to gamma dash h plus gamma w h and by substituting i is equal to h by h what we can write is that gamma dash h plus i gamma w h by dividing throughout by h we can write sigma dash by h is equal to gamma dash plus i gamma w if you look into it the effective unit weight sigma dash by h is called as effective unit weight is increased by term i gamma w i gamma w is nothing but the seepage force magnitude seepage it is increased by the term of the, which is equivalent to the seepage force magnitude in the direction of the flow. So this equation 1 implies for a model that is subjected to downward vertical gradient i that the effective unit weight of the soil will be increased by seepage force of the magnitude i gamma w. So this is from the basis what we actually discussed we what we have deduced we said that the sigma dash by sigma dash by h is written as gamma m that is the effective unit weight of the soil which is increased by the seepage force term that is i gamma w. Now by writing sigma dash by h is equal to gamma m is equal to gamma dash i gamma plus i gamma w and now we can write the unit weight scale factor and hydraulic or hydraulic gradient scale factor as gamma m by gamma p gamma m by gamma p this is gamma p. So gamma p is equal to total or submerged unit weight of the soil depending upon the ground water conditions of the in the prototype. So gamma p is nothing but the total or submerged unit weight of the soil depending upon the ground water conditions in the prototype and for saturated condition it can be gamma p is equal to gamma dash p. So from scaling loss the model will simulate a prototype structure scale n is to n where bm by bb is equal to 1 by n. For so from, from scaling loss we can say that the model will simulate a prototype structure uh, for scale n is equal to n where bm by bb is equal to 1 by n. When a 1 by n scale model test is performed under hydraulic gradient scale factor or unit weight uh, scale factor n capital N is equal to small n the stress due to self weight of soils at homologous points of model and prototype will be same. So uh, when a 1 by n scale model test is performed under hydraulic gradient scale factor 
or unit weight scale factor capital N is equal to small n the stress due to sulphate of soils at homologous points of model and prototype will be same. So that means that sigma v in model is equal to gamma m z m where I, when we substitute the gamma m that is the effective unit weight of soil as gamma dash plus i gamma w z m we can write uh, as by using uh, gamma m by gamma p is equal to n we can write that n gamma p into z p b n there is nothing but sigma v in model is equal to sigma v in prototype. So if the same soil is tested in the model as well as in the prototype and the same stress path is followed the strain in the model and prototype will be expected to be same that is epsilon m by epsilon p is equal to 1 while the displacements of the prototype will be larger than the model by a factor n is equal to capital N. So with that what actually implies is that by maintaining a hydraulic gradient which is you know by higher with the differential pressures between top and bottom of the soil we can actually ensure that identical stresses as that in the prototype. So in this slide we can actually see that a model with a soil sample of height LM say 0.3 meter is subjected to water pressure difference of say delta P is equal to 300 kilopascals. PT is the pressure on the top of the soil. PB is the pressure on the bottom of the soil. So PT minus PB delta P is equal to 300 kilopascals. So if let delta P is caused due to the head difference of H then I is equal to we can write that uh, let us say H is the uh, head which is uh, you know equivalent to that uh, 300 kilopascals of differential pressure and H plus LM divided by uh, LM is nothing but the hydraulic gradient. So what we can write I is equal to 1 plus H by LM and we can write for H delta P by gamma W that is the differential pressure by gamma W is the unit weight of water into multiplied by LM is nothing but the length of the sample. So we can get we can get that I is equal to 1 plus 300 divided by 10 into 0.3 where gamma W is equal to 10 kilo per meter cube and it is 101 that I hydraulic gradient is about 101 with the gamma W is equal to 10 kilo per meter cube and gamma P is equal to gamma saturated is say 20 kilo per meter cube we can write and we can get n as 10 plus 101 into 10 divided by 20 we will be with that we will be able to get 50 scale factor this implies that if these conditions are maintained if the differential pressure of pt minus pb as 300 kilo pascals is maintained for a with gamma m is equal to gamma p is equal to 20 kilo per meter cube we can say that lp is equal to 15 to 0.3 that is 15 meters of you know the length of the soil which is actually represented in the field. So this is you know interesting you know technique wherein this is possible and similarly when with the gamma p is equal to gamma dash is equal to 10 kilo per meter cube with n is equal to you know gamma p is equal to gamma dash that is with 10 kilo per meter cube under submerged unit weight conditions we it actually says that it is 100 is equal to 100 that means it is about 30 meters. So but the relation n is equal to gamma m by gamma p if you write that gamma dash plus i gamma w in model gamma dash plus i gamma w in prototype for all practical purposes gamma w is equal to gamma dash that is you know the submerged unit weight and unit weight of water are most identical and i is equal to 0 in the prototype then in that case we can write n is equal to 1 plus i is equal to 1 plus delta p by lm into gamma w. So this is the expression what we actually use for reducing the the hydraulic gradient method. So in the hydraulic gradient similitude method which can be applied for granular soils particularly here you know the conditions are that you know where we can actually do the applications like testing of footings on sand and particularly testing of you know footings on sand with either concentric loads or eccentric loads or it now recently it has been applied for testing of piles in calculating the uplift capacity of the pile in the soil embedded in sandy soil saturated soil profile wherein you know so here the one of the demerits is that you know the the control of this particular you know delta p differential pressure need to be maintained and second thing that the surface has to be horizontal under those conditions it is possible that if you are able to do then it actually simulates and satisfies the condition that gamma m is equal to n gamma p and identical stress in model prototype can be achieved. So the applications involved you know can be applied for piles in embedded in sandy soils or footings resting on sand or anchors embedded in sand particularly 
to the vertical or inclined pull out. So these are the possible applications of this technique and uh, this technique actually has got merits and uh, demerits in its application. Uh, so um, this uh, you know technique uh, uh, with uh, this particular limitations not extended uh, further but uh, the technique what we have discussed is that by manipulating the changing the G uh, that is enhancing the G and reducing uh, for a small scale model and thus that technique what we have defined or what we have named as the centrifuge physical modeling centrifuge based physical modeling. So the centrifuge based physical modeling uh, technique evolved as a very powerful tool for geotechnical engineers for understanding the uh, geotechnical behavior of structures. So centrifuge based physical modeling technique is a physical modeling technique in which a small scale model that is reduced by 1 is to n subjected to a vert, uh, subjected to a rotation about a vertical axis in a horizontal plane. By doing this then identical stresses in model and prototype can be uh, maintained by with that uh, the stress fields can be maintained as those in the prototype. This actually is possible to understand and uh, you know uh, the behavior of the uh, number of uh, geotechnical structures.